Hi everyone, I'm Paula from One Code Camp. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to be continuing the topic of sending messages over the Ethereum blockchain. If you haven't watched the first video, I highly suggest you check it out. Over there, we look into the solidity functions for sending messages over the Ethereum blockchain. Today, we're going to be creating a very simple but user-friendly front-end for our decentralized messaging app. Let's get started. In our earlier tutorial, we created a Solidity smart contract that can send messages over the blockchain. And we can also get the messages that we have sent or that we have received using our MetaMask wallet address. If you have not watched that part of the tutorial yet, please do go ahead and follow the steps as you will be needing that smart contract deployed on the blockchain so that you can get a contract address. In this next part of the tutorial, we will be creating a very simple front end so that we have a user interface that actually calls on the functions within our contract. This way, we have a more user-friendly place to access those functions instead of always having to go through Etherscan to send messages or view the messages that we have received. Now, just like our contract, this front end is going to be a very, very simple application. We are going to stick to some simple beginner friendly languages and we're going to keep it simple and educational just for you. Here's an example of how it's going to look. So we have this MetaMask, connect MetaMask button over here, which for me, it already, it detected that I've already connected my MetaMask in the past. So it just automatically connected here is an example of how it's going to look. Pretty simple, right? Over here on the left, we have two input fields for the address that we want to send a message to and another input field for the actual message. And on the right, we have the actual conversation container. When it is a received message, it will appear as a chat bubble on the left in blue. And if it is a sent message, it will instead appear on the right in green. To achieve today's application, to achieve today's output, we are going to be making use of two very special libraries. The first one is Ethers.js. This will help us integrate our front end to our smart contract. And for our styling, to keep it simple, we are simply going to be using Bootstrap. And we are going to do all of this with our trusty Visual Studio code in the same directory that we created and deployed our smart contract. So let's get started with that. Let's start by creating a new folder in our project folder. I'm going to call this one client. And in our client, I'm going to create new file, two files, an index.html file and a script.js file for our JavaScript. We won't be needing a CSS file because we're going to use Bootstrap to keep things simple for us. I'm going to start with the basic structure of our document. And for the title, I'm going to call this messaging app demo. Within the head tag, I'm going to import the bootstrap library as a CDN. I'm also going to add the ethers.js script library right here. And of course, we are going to add our own script.js file right here. Now in the body tag, let's start by creating two containers.
This one will be for our buttons. In another container, this one will be for our Let's start by creating two containers. This first one will hold our buttons, our connect metamask button, and our refresh chat button. And this one will hold our composer and our conversation body. Let's create our buttons first. So we want two buttons. This one will say connect metamask. And this one will say refresh chat. Now, if you have the live preview extension ex installed, you can actually go ahead and click this so we can see our code updating as we go along. As you can see over here to the side, the two buttons have already appeared, but they have little to no styling whatsoever. So I'm going to give them some bootstrap classes to style them and make them really appear as buttons. This one, this one should be button warning, so it comes out a little yellow. And this one will be button dark. There we go, we can see the colors now. Let's try to center these and give them a little bit of margin. There we go, but we still have a very long way to go. Now these two buttons should have an on-click, but we are going to leave them empty for now because we haven't created those JavaScript functions just yet. Let's go to our actual um, app container. This second container will have two more divs inside of it. These are also containers, but the first one will be called Composer. And the second one will be called Messages. For our composer, we're going to want to create a form with two divs that create a form group and a little bit of vertical margins. The first one will have a label. called recipient address and a input type of text called recipient address. And we're also going to give this a placeholder that looks like the beginning of a wallet address. And this label should be for our recipient address. Let's duplicate that form group. This one should be called message for, for message. Change these two message as well and change the placeholder to something like 
what do you want to say? And if we save that, maybe we can already see it in action in our live preview. There we go. So it's not very pretty at the moment, but we can fix that in a little while. For our messages container, we're actually going to leave it blank because we want this to be filled up by our script later on. But we can style it just a little bit, so let's give these two containers a background color. This one should be BG secondary, so it's kind of a gray color. And this one will keep it light, but you'll see in a little while why we want to give it a background at all. Now, because we have these two containers within another container, what we actually want to do here is apply some flex properties using Bootstrap. We want it to appear stacked on top of each other when we want it to appear stacked on top of each other, top and bottom, when the screen size is a little smaller. But when we're previewing it on larger screens, we want them to appear side by side. Now Bootstrap lets us do that quite easily. We're going to add properties of display flex, a flex column as a default, and a flex row whenever the screen size is large or higher. We want the items to align at the start. And we want a universal gap of three. We are also going to give the labels a class of Orm label and the inputs a class of form control. Let's do that for here. Form label, a class of form control. And for this message field, let's change this to text area instead. Now for these two input fields, we're going to give them a class. So for the label, it should be form label. And for the input, it should be form control. Let's do the same over here. A class of form label and a class of form control. For, this, for the messages input field, let's actually convert this into a text area. Remove this type right here. Now for our two input fields, let's give them some bootstrap classes as well. So for the labels, let's give them a class of form label. And for the input, let's give this a class of form control. Now for the second input field, let's actually change this into a text area and give it maybe three rows. And this needs to be closed. Let's fix that. It is automatically changing it for me because of this. There we go. Nope. Now for the second input field, I want to actually change this into a text area. So let's replace this element with a text area one, and let's say it needs to span around three rows. Now we can give it a class name, well, form label for the label, and form control for the text area field. Let's take a look. There we go. It's looking great. Now, how do we actually go about styling the messages if we can't see them yet? So for this part, let's work on our MetaMask 
So for this part, let's work. Let's. So for this part, let's first work on our script.js file so we can connect our MetaMask and actually make messages appear in our messages container. Now we already have our script.js connected over here, but let's check first if it is correctly reading a file. So I am just going to place a simple alert that says working. Save that. And when I reload my live preview, it should give me an alert. There we go, it says that it is working. We can now delete that. We're going to declare over here two constant variables. The first one being our contract address, which we should have saved from earlier. I'm going to paste that in here as a string. The second one will be our contract API, which we can get from our hard hat file. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to open artifact, contract, chatting app.json. And we can see over here the property called API. So we're going to copy everything within that square bracket, which is until here and paste that as our contract API. Now, since it's a little long, I'm going to just fold it over here. This will inform our code what functions exactly we are calling on in our smart contract. Now, I'm going to declare two variables called signer and contract. Now, if we take a look at the Ethers documentation, we'll see that signer and contract are actually classes that we need in order to interact with our smart contract. The signer is what we use to sign messages and transactions. We're authorizing the network to, um, we're authorizing the network to perform operations on our behalf, that is the user. The contract, on the other hand, represents a connection to the specific contract which we have declared using the contract address. The provider provides a connection to the Ethereum network, read-only connection to the blockchain. We will be using that in the very next step. We're going to declare our first async function called connect metamask. Now this function will be called later on in two instances whenever they click on the button, the connect metamask button, and as soon as the page actually loads. So we're gonna call const provider new ethers dot providers dot web three provider we're going to pass window.ethereum. Then we are going to await for MetaMask to request our account connection, and it will provide a list of the accounts available. Then we are going to wait for the signer that is provided by that Ethereum connection. So this should be ETH instead of Ether. And this should be equal to await because we're assigning this to our signer variable. We are also going to assign a contract variable as new ethers.contract object, which contains the contract address, the contract API, and the signer. So if the signer provides a truthy value, we are going to show a truncated version of the connected wallet address instead of the connect MetaMask text in the button. So we are going to get the element of connect MetaMask
that should be this button right here, but it doesn't have the ID yet. So let's call it connect MetaMask. And we're going to let the address be the signer. And then we're going to create a special val variable called get trunk address. I'm going to use a string literal here to get address, which was declared in, the, in just the previous line. We're going to slice this, add dot, dot, dot. And we're going to also slice the last four characters. So we want the inner HTML of the connect button, the element we got over here. And we are going to instead place the trunk address content or value. Then we are going to update the class list. We'll remove the button warning, which is a bootstrap class to give us that yellow background. And we are instead going to add button light and border warning. Now, if the signer does not have a truthy value, it will simply show the defa default styling. The inner HTML should still be connect MetaMask. I see a type over here. So we are going to add back the button warning class and make sure the button light and border warning classes are removed. Now there are some things we're going to want to add within our connect metamask function but we'll add them a little later they don't quite exist yet first let's look at some warnings that this code is giving us so over here i think we've missed a closing curly bracket. There we go. It actually solved most of those errors already. Now we want to create another async function, this time for sending messages. So this should be called send message. We are going to take the value of the input field. This is get element by ID. We are looking for the input field connected with our recipient address right over here. And I can see another typo over there. So this ID recipient address, let's just copy it to be sure. Not value because it should be the value of the input field. And we're going to do the same thing for the message. Let's look over here. So the ID is message. And we're going to get the value of that one. Next, we're going to call on our contract variable and actually send the transaction. So we're going to do that with a variable called the X for transaction. We're going to await contract. The send a message function, which if you take a look at our API, if you look at our contract API, it is right here. It takes in two inputs, address and a string. So the address should be this one, our secret address and the string should be the value within the message variable. So we're going to wait for the transaction to complete. And once it is done, 
we're going to create an alert that says message sent. And there we go. We have our send message function already. Let's connect these two functions with our front end already. So let's save those first. First, we have the connect MetaMask function. Which, as we mentioned earlier, should be called on for this button. So when we click on the connect MetaMask button, it should call on the connect MetaMask function. We also want it to automatically call whenever the body has loaded. Now over here in our form, we actually haven't added a send message button yet. So let's do it within the form tags. We're going to add a button that says send message type of button. The class will be button, button primary, so it appears just a basic blue. And then let's give it some vertical margins. Lastly, it should say on click, send message. When we take a look at our preview, we can see that the send message button has already appeared but it is not connecting MetaMask immediately on load. So let's take a look at our terminal. So our terminal is saying that the method ETH underscore request account does not exist, which makes sense because, which makes sense because it actually, sh which makes sense because it should actually be accounts, plural. Let's take a look at it. Then. There we go. So I'm going to connect my first account. Click on next and connect. So as you can see, it has now, it, as you can see, it is now displaying the short version of my wallet address, but with a stray curly bracket over here. So we can fix that. So over here, drunk address, let's just remove the extra curly bracket. And when we connect MetaMask again, it is now displaying correctly. We can also test our send message function to see if it's working, although we won't be able to see the messages display live just yet. Now, before I can actually send a message, I have to make sure that my MetaMask is on the Sepolia test network because that's where the smart contract was deployed and that's where transactions must take place. So I'm gonna paste in here my own wallet address and I'm just going to say, this is a test message. I'll see it later. Send message.
I'm going to paste my own wallet address in here. I'm going to type, this is a test message. You'll see it later. Now you can see MetaMask pop up. It's letting me know that this is a send message transaction with the wallet F. It is showing me that it is a send message transaction or function with the contract address written right over here. These are the gas fees. I'm just going to click confirm. So we might have to wait a little bit for the transaction to go through. We'll know it's done when we receive the alert saying message sent. There we go, the message has been sent and as we mentioned, we'll see it a little later. Let's continue coding our Let's continue coding. We're on to our very last function, but for this one, we've got a lot of things that we want to accomplish with the sent messages appearing on the right and the received messages appearing on the left. More importantly, we want them displayed in order of time sent. This is going to be another async function. I'm going to call it get sorted messages. First, we're going to call on two functions from the contract. That is the get received messages function and the get sent messages function. And we are going to assign them to a local variable. So this is receive messages, await contract, dot get received messages. Same thing here, except sent messages and get sent messages. Now we are going to store both of those into a larger array that spreads the receive the messages and the send messages. And we want those to be sorted to variables from timestamp according to timestamp. We're going to fix them in a bit, but for now, we just want to know if they're going to appear. So let's create a variable that gets the messages div document get element by ID, where the element we're looking for is the messages container over here with an ID of messages. And for now, this is going to look a little ugly, but we want the message div in our HTML to be equal to all messages. Let's save it and take a look at our live server. So nothing is appearing just yet because we haven't actually called on the get sorted message fun nothing is appearing yet because we haven't actually called on our get sorted message function let's make it appear immediately when the page load first let's fix this it should be get sorted messages yeah. and we know that when the page loads when the body loads it immediately calls on the connect metamask function so what we can do is simply add the get sorted messages function to the end of our connect metamask function. Let's save that and take a look.
so it's still not working. And our terminal is telling us that get received messages is not a function. If we take a look at our contract API, we'll see that the function actually has a little bit of a typing error where the second, where the first E in messages is capitalized. Now, since we can't go back and change this, the contract is already deployed. We're just going to keep on using this exact capitalization. So we're going to head over here, change this, get received messages with a capital E. Let's take a look at our demo. <laughs> and there we go. So like we said earlier, it is a little bit ugly, but at least we can see that the data is coming in and it is in fact displaying on our front end. The first thing I want to do is change the background color of our messages container to light rather than secondary. So it has a lighter shade of gray as opposed to white, which is what we earlier thought it would be. Then let's go back to our get sorted messages function and change a few things. First, I'm going to comment this out for now. Then I'm going to ask. Then I'm going to map each of the messages within the all messages array. And if they are from the receive messages array, they will have an additional property called receive. If not, they have a property called send. So let's call it messages with direction. All messages. We're going to map each message like so. So it receives messages includes the current message we're looking at. We're going to return the message and add a direction where the value is received. Else, we're just going to add a direction that says sent. Let's uncomment this and set the inner HTML of the message div to be a new variable called messages display. And we're going to set that in here as the inner HTML of the message div. Let's return to our messages with direction. So messages with direction for each message if the message direction, which we set over here, is equal to send, we're going to create a message row, create a new element, which will be a div. The message row will have a few classes. So we want it to be display flex, flex column. 
and we want to align items to the end. Then we want to create a message info div, which will be a paragraph. We're going to create a trunk address again, like earlier. But this time we are going to slice the recipient field. The first four and the last four. And the message info div should have an inner HTML of sent to the trunk address on the message dot timestamp. Now this will display the Unix timestamp which we received from Solidity. We can fix that a little later. For now, let's add some classes to our info div. We want the text to appear in the end. We want the text color to be secondary. We want a top margin of 2, a bottom margin of 0, and a horizontal margin of 0. And we want the message info div to be appended to the message row, which is a flex element. Message row, append, child, message info div. Now we're going to do something similar for, for the actual message content, which we are going to call a message node. So we are going to create another paragraph element. Add some classes, namely, namely lead for the, for the typography, a success background, which will be green, a little bit of padding, some comfortable margins, We want the message node to be rounded like a chat bubble. And we want the max width to be 50% of the available width. And we want the minimum width to be 50% of the available area. So we want the inner text of the message node to be the content of the message we're currently working with. And we want the message node to also be appended to the message row. And finally, we want the message row appended to the messages display. Now we're actually going to do pretty much the exact same thing for receive the messages with just a few changes. So we're going to copy all of this. Else if message.direction equals to receive, paste all of that in. So we want the message row to align to the start of the row. Instead of the recipient, we want this to be the sender. We also want the text to appear to align from the start.
and we want the background to be primary, which is blue. And we want the text here to also align at the start. Whereas the sent messages should align towards the end. And there we go. So we actually want this to display all of this. Let's take a look at our front end, see if it's working. So our messages div is giving us undefined and our terminal says that the new child element contains the parent and you can see this on line 177 of our script.js file. So if we take a look over here, we try to append the message row to the message row. This should in fact be the message node. Let's see if we made that mistake at the other section. So on line 208, I made the same mistake. Let's fix that. We also have another error on line 178 that says cannot read properties of undefined. It is referring to this messages display append child message row. Now I think the problem is that the messages display variable is not actually an element. So let's try changing this to an element. For a element, which will be another div. The problem is that let messages display is not actually an element. Let's work around this for now by simply using the message div as a container to which all of our message rows are appended. Now this will create some imperfections later on. But we can actually, but at least, The problem is that let messages display is not actually an element that can be appended to. Let's work around this for now by simply using the message div as the element to which all the message rows get appended to. Now this will create some imperfections in the front end, but at least we can get our app working. So let's look for the instances of messages display, which there are two of them. We're just going to change all occurrences to message div. We will also need to change the message node text to a light color. So let's add it over here, text light. And here as well, text light. Now, when we take a look at our front end, it is working. Now, when we take a look at our front end, we can see that the messages are now appearing as we want them to. There are just a couple of final things that we will want to change. 
So this should say from instead of to, because it is referring to the address that sent the message. And we will want to change the timestamp into something human readable. The last thing we want to do is change this into human readable timestamp. So we are going to create a new variable called message date. We're going to create a new date object with the message timestamp multiplied by 8,000. Now here, instead of the message.timestamp, we're going to call it message date and convert it into a locale string. And we're going to do the same for the other section. But in the case of received messages, we want this to be from. And this should actually have parentheses because it is a method. Let's take a look at our demo. Here we go. It's a lot more presentable now. One benefit of using Bootstrap for our styling here is that our front end is actually responsive. In our inner HTML, we said that we want it to display as a column by default, but when the screen is large enough, but when the screen is large enough, it will display as a row. Let's see how that looks. Here's how it looks on larger screens. The composer interface and the conversation are side by side. Now, the final thing we want to do here is add a function to the refresh chat button. And as mentioned earlier, this will contain some imperfections because of the way we wrote our messages display code. Let's take a look at that right now. In our refresh chat button, we want to add the get sorted messages function. Now, whenever we click on refresh chat, it will immediately call on all of the messages saved on our smart contract. However, it does not care if those messages are already displayed on the front end. So when we refresh the chat, it will simply append everything. This is different from when the page loads for the first time and it simply calls on the messages to display them on a clean slate. Now this is a front end imperfection and you're free to find your own creative solution to this imperfection. One final thing we want to add to our application before we can be satisfied with it is related to the network we are connected on. Now, since our smart contract was deployed to the Sepolia test network, we are going to want to make sure that our users are connected to Sepolia before they start interacting with our application. And we're going to do that with our connect metamask function. So let's head back to our script.js and look for our connect metamask function. Now right here after we've now right here after we've set up our provider signer and contract variables, we are going to make a window request window.ethereum.request method of method of wallet underscore add ethereum chain and some params chain id will be the chain ID of Sepolia, RPC URLs, RPC 
again, the RBC URL of Sepolia, the chain name of Sepolia, native currency, where the properties are set to E, and the decimals of 18. And below that, the block explorer URL which is sepolia.etherscan.io Now we can see that as soon as the page loads or whenever it calls on the connect MetaMask function, it will request to add the Sepolia test network to MetaMask if it's not already on the account, and it will ask you to switch And there we go. Now we have a pretty basic, pretty simple decentralized messaging application. Now, once again, we've kept this completely beginner friendly. There are so many things you could do, so many features that you could add to make this a much more usable application. If you want to If you want to pick up this app and turn it into something more advanced, please do let us know. We would love to see what other features you can think of to improve this application.